to a scan to one half parsec on screen. Weapons right back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break. Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear you talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host David and joining me today we have Stuart. What's up guys? We have Scarecrow. Howdy boys. And the glorious leader himself, the <laughs> one and only founder and greatest man alive as far as anyone here is concerned except for everybody, is Michael, the founder of Save Sci-Fi. Hey, guys. I oh. disagree with you on that one, though. John Sheridan's the uh, greatest guy alive. <laughs> 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 oh. So, anyway, on tonight's show, we have the... <coughs> we have me choking on nothing and dying. <laughs> Followed closely by... Scarecrow taking over and taking over the whole podcast. <laughs> uh, David, Wait, don't what? die. We like you here. <laughs> no crying <laughs> allowed, dude. Can you at least die quietly? Uh, <laughs> that's my line. <laughs> Not even two minutes into the podcast and we've already broken it. Yay! Okay, anyway, on tonight's show we have the Doctor Who Christmas special. Ascension and other news from Star Wars, Star Trek, and a little bit of Doctor Who, which we'll cover during the the Doctor Who segment. So first up, we have the Doctor Who Christmas special. What did we think? Starting with Stuart, just because he's the person at the front of the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked it, but I also disliked it. There, there, there are a couple of things I liked. I don't like that Clara's still around. Why, Moffat? Yeah, that's actually our Doctor Who news. I was planning on leaving it for later, but eh, I guess we'll get it over and done with straight away. Originally, when this episode was finished and done and wrapped and post-production, all all done, um, Clara was meant to leave. The last scene in the episode was meant to be the Doctor finding old Clara and then sort of looking at her and her 60s, 70s, 80s, the whole old she's meant to be um, and sort of seeing her in her final moments as she sort of falls asleep and dies in her sleep and that's when the doctor sort of leaves um, then she decided she was going to come back next season and everybody went ah, chaos and had to, they had to rewrite and reshoot the last bit of the episode so yeah Fun. yes I wish she had just gone with the original plan and disappeared yeah, I've got nothing against that. She's a good companion. She really, she is. But I would have liked it to sort of her to finish there simply because it would have been a nice, good bookend. The way they'd written it, it was a really good story for her to sort of say goodbye in. And for her to continue after that, I think, might be a little bit hard. Um, yeah. Other than that, facehuggers. <laughs> that Aliens reference, come on. That, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Face Hugger! I'm like, oh god, the memories are coming back! <laughs> you... There's a movie about aliens? A horror movie? That's offensive. Yeah. No wonder everybody's trying to invade you. <laughs> that was a high point. I've that got was... to admit, that was a high point. Yeah, that was good. So... I like Shona. She was hilarious. That that one line um, from yeah. the Doctor actually sold me on Capaldi's Doctor. Until that point, I was still very unsure one way or the other if he was going to be a good or a bad sort of doctor in the long run. And that one line was enough to sort of swap me into the, yeah, in the end, it's going to be good. I like Capaldi. Capaldi's a, a fresh take on the doctor, one that we haven't had in a long time, not since nine, if not before him. And, you know, he, he's more of a grumpy at times, and but he's a lot more serious, which is something it's nice to see after so many years of Smith and then a little of Tennant before that. Just so much goofiness, and now it's got some actual, you know, substance to it. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm not disagreeing with that. I, um, I do actually. I, I was very mixed about the earlier season. Um, they had a lot of stories that was sort of hit and miss, but overall, I could see the potential. But now I'm sure that he'll live up to it. That would probably be a better way of putting it. Well, there was early season. This, like you said, Dave, the stories were a bit hit and miss. But at the same time, those stories weren't really written with Capaldi in mind. Yeah. They were more written as a... They seemed like okay, Matt Smith let's, leftovers. Pretty much. And Capaldi did pretty well with them, with it, trying to put his own spin on it. Because that's the, what I love about Doctor Who. Everyone who comes on as the Doctor, had his own style and puts his own spin on a classic character. Exactly. And um, one of the things he did say early on was, I want this Doctor to be hated. I don't want him to be the lovable Doctor like the last couple. I want him to be the Doctor that everybody dislikes until they realise they like him. And I think he nailed that. Because yeah. people, he was copying flack left, right and centre. Exactly. For early stages of it. And now people are starting to go, oh, hang on. He's different, but he's not bad. Yeah. And after all, the reason I restarted this podcast was to talk about Doctor Who. And then by the time I finally got around to making it, Doctor Who was over. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> 11 episodes later, Christmas special. Oh, yeah, man, well. <laughs> I, was, I enjoyed this Christmas special a lot more than last year's. Yeah. I couldn't get into last year's one no matter how many times I watched it this one I loved it like it had it's really funny moments like I love Shona especially with the um, instruction manual she just gets chocolate and dead yeah <laughs> uh, the second time yeah, they I, did the manuals where they're like very very very, very, very. very and then she dead. just sort of she pauses and looks at them and goes dead <laughs> <laughs> although the chocolate one was my favourite because she's like why do I get chocolate <laughs> 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 pretty much um, I want to bring something up but I don't know if I'm looking into this too much or not yep is um is that the end where um Santa sort of takes them all off and they all go back to their to where they're sleeping uh, like b before the dream like like before the dream ends yeah yeah Effectively. like what, when they're in the sleigh in the sky yeah I don't know if I'm reading into this too much, but he says, I know where all your homes are. And just, uh, my head immediately thought Gallifrey. Like, <laughs> Santa knows where Gallifrey is. Yeah. Why well, not? Well, technically, he was a dream construct, presumably created by one of them, like, say, Clara or something. So he may or may not actually know everything. But depending on where those bug things are... Um, if there are some on Gallifrey and if they are linked psychically over time and space then that's a possibility well, see, that's well you know like... oh, you go. Uh, okay yeah I was just going to say well you know along those lines but slightly differently you know I don't I wouldn't necessarily think that if this is true that uh that maybe that some of them are on Gallifrey but possibly since he was a dream construct and he was in one of their shared dreams. You know, therefore, he probably took parts from everybody. So, that may mean that the Doctor does subconsciously, somewhere in his mind, know where Gallifrey is. Yeah, and I'm sort of glad that, like, at the end of last season, when they sort of said that the Master turns, well, Mistress turns around and goes, this is where Gallifrey is, go check it out. And he's like, that's the original coordinates, and he rocks up there and it's gone. I saw a video online where someone added in the end of the... Uh, the 50th. The where, 50th. They did the bit where they put it in the time loop. Yeah. yeah. I think that would have been perfect, actually. That would have been great. That would be a kick myself because I missed the opportunity moment. Yeah. But even still, even if that didn't happen, um, I'm glad that he didn't find it. Because I would love Gallifrey to be the, the Easter egg in the wind where he takes two, three, four seasons to find Gallifrey. And yeah, like, like have it as, every as season he minute. finds like a little clue somewhere that sort of might turn him slightly in the right direction, might turn him in the wrong direction. And it might even be like a background hint 
And then at the end of the, say, the last episode, say three or four seasons later, when Capaldi's l- planning on leaving, whenever that is, one, two seasons later, whenever it is, have it turn out that this place that he's been fighting inside of the whole time and hasn't been able to get out of in the episode, bam, he's on Gallifrey and he didn't even know it. Hmm. I that think would be cool. That would be sort of a moment where he would almost sort of fall to his knees and start crying. That would be a why me, why you <laughs> bastards moment. Yeah, followed closely by a regeneration because. Ha, 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 ha. Well, because at that point his his grumpiness would no longer be needed. It would be a more of a happy doctor again. Would exactly. that be the perfect time to bring in the, a female doctor? Yeah. A female time. People, people are talking about that. You heard Stephen Moffat did recently confirm for a fact that the doctor could be a female. Female. Yeah. Now, so I've got sort of no real issue with. Uh, gender swap regeneration on any character with one exception being the Doctor and I know I'm a hypocrite hurt me in the comment section I don't care Um, I have no issue with the Master swapping no issue with any other Time Lord swapping it's just that the Doctor is such a fatherly type figure Mm -hmm. unless they played it really 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 well I don't really think that (laughs) the swap would be worth it, if you know what I mean. There's a lot of people out there in the, the feminist groups and stuff like that. I won't go there. But <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're oh, they're s- going to rip you apart. <laughs> they're, no, no, they're screaming for a female doctor because it's unfair. It's only been male. And to me, it's like, unless you've got a good story point, a good story reason to do it, why? If you want to bring a female doctor-centric back in... Bring Jenny back. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say have the um have have the female doctor like Donna really sassy. <laughs> well, see, we've we've it's <laughs> have it be Donna. We, we've had a heap oh. of really cool, sort of strong female characters, and the uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just I'm a hypocrite. Call me a hypocrite. I know I am. But <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I, with I've got... I'm with you on it, Dave. The one person I think that shouldn't get gender bent is the doc. Yeah. But that's me. So. Can we bring K9 back? Please. <laughs> K- I love, K- I love K9. With, K9's with Sarah Jane in her. wherever she happens to be now. I'm assuming she's just ascended, given the circumstances from a couple of years ago. Mm. Unless the sun's got him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I've got one more question. The planet that the Doctor wakes up on. It, I don't know why, but it reminded it me of It looks Trenzel. like the one of the Day of the Doctor, right? Trenzel. Another Day of the Doctor. So. Yeah. yeah, it reminded me of Trenzalore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking, what's he doing back on Trenzalore? I got a feeling it was just a random set that they had sitting there that they could just whack him on top of and say, Alien planet! If we keep it nice and close, they won't tell. <laughs> Oh no! You know what? Made, what that actually made me think of, and I was discussing this with my brother when we were talk when we were watching. Um, yeah, the lava. It wasn't Trenzalor. It was the uh, it was the planet that the Doctor. Um, that Clara took take, the Doctor to. Yeah. Yes, when he was yes. th- when and she it, threw the keys maybe, away. Yeah, exactly. Oh, maybe, that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> made me think for a second that maybe everything that had followed never actually happened. Yeah. Well, that'd be and creepy. that would be yeah. Uh, it would have been. That would be a very Moffat thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, anyway, final final rating out of I don't know arbitrarily selected number ten. <laughs> what would you give the Christmas special, Stuart? I'm gonna give it eight Daleks out of ten <laughs> to keep it Doctor related with the number somehow. <laughs> uh, uh, Scarecrow, what would you do? I'm going to give it a 7 to 8. It was pretty good, but the um, Clara staying kind of dropped it. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Michael? I'll give it a 9. Give it a 9? Someone's feeling generous. Hey, I, I like Clara, you know. Doesn't <laughs> doesn't hurt the fact that she's quite attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to admit, I agree with you on that, but I, I, I think the time was done. too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Her got... time was done. Yeah. She's done two seasons. Name one other companion on the last ten years of Doctor Who 
where they've where the companion has survived more than two seasons. Amy, Amy Pond. Amy. I like that. So everyone's just like Amy, Amy, doesn't... Amy, 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 Amy. <laughs> Pond doesn't count. That was a. That wasn't even Doctor Who. That was the. That was the Amy Pond show. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. You know, Claire is supposedly now going to be the longest-running companion in the modern series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, see, I would like to think that um, Rose is only because she came back <laughs> right at the very end. <laughs> I like Rose. Rose was good. That's. Like... The funny thing is, she's one of the most hated on companions. Yeah, I know. It's really weird. Uh, anyway, we're going to jump away to our first ad break for our supporters, Hawaii Con and um, DC Danes. So we'll be back in exactly one minute. Assuming I remember to turn the channel up that has the audio for the ads. What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragons, smugglers, and thieves, will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. Welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, pretending to be Shatner, with the dramatic <laughs> pauses. Do you have a rock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might. <laughs> do, I need to start playing, do I need to start playing Star Trek? And... Uh, what? Uh, do I need I... to start playing Star Trek on my phone? <laughs> Maybe, mate, maybe. I'm playing Star Trek right now on that. Uh, uh. <laughs> right. Anyway, it's time to move on to the next topic. Ascension. Now, for those who missed out, Ascension aired on... Actually, no, screw it. I'm going to let Michael take this one. <coughs> Why? Because I love throwing him randomly in the deep end. <laughs> Looks like my choking disease is part of the Scarecrow. <laughs> Who will uh, choke no, to death shit. next? <laughs> Not choking, just sneezing. <laughs> Alright. The rain. Asc <laughs> okay, Ascension time. Alright, well, yes, as uh, as David was saying, Ascension aired on Sci-Fi recently. I don't remember the exact dates, but it was a three-night event. Unfortunately, I wish it was longer. I know there are a lot of people out there who said that, you know... They were tired of sci-fi's productions, but you know, honestly, so am I. But this one didn't re didn't deserve the hate that I heard a lot of. It, yes, it wasn't really the show we expected. Um, you're breaking up a little bit. The Michael. trailers and everything, previews, all gave us the idea. Yes, I was going back into space. Oh, whoops. How about now? Ah, that's better. Not better? That's better. I don't know what's going on. Okay. It's just sort of... Just a little bit of lag there. Yeah, just a little bit. Must have been my statement. Anyway, yes. So it wasn't the show we were expecting. Yeah. The trailers and such gave us that idea it was going to be back in space. Yeah. And, well, uh... To be honest, mm -hmm. the first hint I had that it wasn't in space was that they were walking around under Earth normal gravity. <laughs> <laughs> in a ship that was made in the 60s. I was a little bit like, oh, well, I can't have been... artificial gravity yet. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, it, it that's was, legit. <laughs> it would have been a, like, you know, centripetal force. My physics professor would smack me yeah. if he heard me say that. Yeah. Well, if it was centripetal force, it would have shown the ship spinning, and it wasn't. So. Oh, I've... that's right, it wasn't. 
So I sort of looked at that and went, it's not spinny, it's not centripetal force. Obviously it's voodoo. They have voodoo themselves <laughs> just to the floor. Sci-fi. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. It was just from the sci-fi channel, you know. No, it's, yeah, it's also from the sci-fi channel, we obviously can't forget that. <laughs> oh god, that's just the best things on the sci-fi channel I've seen over the years. Uh, oh yes, the, yeah, so, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, over here, I, I don't think it's technically Ed, um, but, when, <coughs> but when I can, I will get my hands on a DVD copy, but from what I've seen, it's really, really good. And we've lost Michael. So, <laughs> So that Good happened. work. So that happened. Um, he may or may not jump back. Hilariously, the only reason he's awake right now, it's like four and three in the morning, four in the morning in the States, the only reason he's awake is to talk Ascension. And Any the segment he drops out of <laughs> is Ascension. <laughs> we that well, didn't we? Yeah, winning. So yeah. anyway, what do, you, what do you guys think of Ascension? Uh, I loved it. Um, I, I didn't get the chance to watch it, sadly. I was, uh, hit, I, I was hit with the would. inexplicable computer failure, which I know Stuart knows quite well about. Yeah, uh, It's still sitting next to me. I can't throw it away yet. I'm not throwing it away. I just need a new power supply. Uh, my internal parts all went kaput, so I'm just going to get a new one. <laughs> but um, back to extension. Um, I re-watched it today. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I think the cast for it was really awesome. Couple yeah. of not- couple of notable faces that I recognize in there. Um, the uh, the uh, what was it? what was the funny bit that I was laughing at? Um, uh, where uh, when um, who's the guy who who? Ah, uh, this is where I need Michael. Oh, he's back. You back, I'm Michael? Back. You back? Yeah. Oh, good. Michael can help me. Yeah. Michael. All Mark. right. Who's the um? Who's the guy who um? Who they took out of the ship at like the begin oh, the, the, at the end of the first episode? The dude that went crazy. The en- the engineer guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? I've got a cast list up right now. Uh, um, of course he doesn't have to be on it. What was this? Was <laughs> Star Star? Yeah, something Stoke. like that. <laughs> when it, when he's Alan Stoke. The, when, Stoke. It, when he yes. um escapes the center, he's just like, it's so bright, I can't see. I'm like, well, duh. So, like, I, that's I, the first thing you say? Okay. It turns out that they've done that experiment in real life. Okay? Say, pretend pretend they have. What would you do if you were born on that ship and you managed to find a way off? Happy, happy, uh, joy, joy? I don't know. Happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> happy, happy, I'm, I'm out of here, boys. Happy, have fun. <laughs> I don't think happy, happy, joy, joy would be, would be the right term. <laughs> But, I mean, you guys know that this is based, the series is based off of an actual program. Yeah. Yeah, there was an actual U.S. program um, back in the 60s where they theorized and they were considering actually doing this, building a, spa- a gener- generational spaceship. This was an actual, you know, actual project that they have, you know, the official files on and everything. You can look it up. Uh, project Orion. Well, yeah, I, yeah, know cool. I, know I knew about I knew about um, the project Orion stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I, uh, I, I another really funny thing that they did is um when the power cut out in the building and the ship and the, the stars like the fake space was still illuminated. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I have to say the ship itself looked fantastic. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that looked the design of it looked incredible. Yeah, and. Admittedly, at the very beginning, the first shot you see is the girl going for a swim in 50s gear. And it's like, <laughs> am I watching the right show? Something <laughs> right yeah, that, that threw me a bit there. And then you had um, Caprica 6 was the head of the... Oh, six. What? Sorry, I was just admiring 6. Yeah, she, <laughs> she was in... She was um, the captain's girlfriendy type person escort thing um wife and, yeah that's the one wife escort <laughs> wife the only difference is a piece of metal um <laughs> <laughs> he says running away from every single female <laughs> cause pissing them off early wasn't fired. enough you're <laughs> running for your life 
Oh, you're oh, just oh, oh. shooting fire at the feminists tonight, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why. I'm sorry. Just like I said, hate me in the comments. Go right Last ahead. show for the year, and he's ripping fire on the feminists. This is gonna end well. <laughs> All hands, rig for impact. <laughs> Breathe. Set your phases to kill. Yeah. <laughs> if you value your life, run. <sighs> doomed. So doomed. Anyway, um. Actually, overall, I would I think that Ascension deserves a TV show. Like, I if agree. you wanted to do a faux reality show, I think that would be one of the best ways of doing it. Like, I could I could see some like MTV or one of those show channels that actually hell I could see sci-fi to be perfectly honest going the way that they have been. Going, you know what? Let's set up a group of people and tell them they're in a spaceship, do some BS trippy stuff that makes them think they're in a spaceship, and watch what they do for six months, 12 months. Isn't that just Big Brother? Effectively. <laughs> but Big, I mean, was, Big Brother was sci-fi. I'm more thinking you launch the house into space and laugh at them as they slowly the <laughs> No, I'm just going to mental image of the house. Especially if you get some flying. rabid feminists in there. <laughs> <laughs> Give them David's podcast to listen to. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> oh, we're gonna cop it this time round. <laughs> oh yeah. To, to our one listener, I hereby apologise. The views of me, of Michael, of Stuart, and of Shane, hey. uh, and of Scarecrow do not necessarily represent those of Save Sci-Fi. Especially the views of Michael. They are technically <laughs> irrelevant. CBS I, I have taken over now. I am your god. Excuse <laughs> me! <laughs> <laughs> I brought you into the And this is why we're always broke. <laughs> we're paying the lawsuits we get into things today. Lawsuits across the world. <laughs> and derailed again. <laughs> we were ever on track. <laughs> it's okay. Once again, Stuart is fired because he's Stuart. Scarecrow's fired because he blew his computer up. I'm fired because I'm awesome. And... I'm fired because it's 4.38 in the morning. Yeah, Michael's fired because he's actually asleep right now, and this is actually a dream. He's got a head crab on. <laughs> a dream crab. A I'm dream sorry, crab. I had to do that straight away. <laughs> it's the most appropriate one to do. No, but I have to say, the fact that we're going off the tracks uh, brought something I wanted to mention. Have any of you guys heard of Snowpiercer? Oh, Ooh. yes. Have you, have you any guys seen it? Or so damn familiar. It's a new movie that came out uh, this year, and it's about af after they uh, this experiment to prevent to either slow or reverse global warming, uh, the Earth is thrown into an ice age, like a horrible ice age, and only remnants of humanity are on the Snowpiercer, which is a train that travels around the globe. At uh, takes 365 days, so a year to get around the globe. But it it's continuously, I think, traveling around the world. That thing crawls. It's... Huh? It's... To take 365 days to get around the planet, that that thing barely moves. That I I, I might be wrong. I yeah. probably am. Anyway, but either way, that's the point of the story: is that they're that they're last humans. Oh, and the train is split up in caste systems, kind of. So like bad special hum... I was about to say. Hunger Games on a train, like the episode of Doctor Who with the mummy. <laughs> Are you my mummy? Matter of time until someone. Are you my there. mummy? Are you my mummy? Are you my mummy? No, Stuart. No. <laughs> I love that reference that he chucked in there. Yeah. That was great. I, I love that when um, I was just about a season, season and a half later, um, when the Sontarans are attacking. And they give Tenet the gas mask. He puts it on and looks at the guy and goes, Are you my hey, mummy? My mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, Be serious. <sighs> anyway, Ascension. Back, 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 back. Somewhere near our original topic that we were on 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, Ascension. If it went as a TV show, how would you go about it? You're in charge, you can do whatever the hell you want. TV show, go. 
Well, obviously this show would end up not really being behind more of a borderline sci-fi fantasy kind of show. Um, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have anything to actually do with space unless they elaborated more on that other planet. And that little girl's pal is that was. Tr- yeah, they'd have oh, when, when she did the um the milk and she just looked at the camera. That was trippy. Yeah, it was. That scared me. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm not afraid oh, to admit God. it. Yeah, that <laughs> sort of moment, sort of playing in the back of your mind. It's like, yeah, it's gonna be bad. But, I mean, if, obviously they're setting what, it up for something more. What would be really funny is if she gets really, really, really angry and actually FTLs that ship. To the planet. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one thing they could do. I mean, that, that's honestly one of the best ways they could proceed with that show yeah. is to actually send that ship in orbit of that planet. I mean, the first, their first mate's already there by himself. Oh, that was hilarious. You notice that the guy he was fighting with isn't there? Yeah, he just yeah, He's in a pool of slush. Yeah, he was slightly <laughs> kind of atomized. <laughs> he's, he's the pull of slush the first mate um, um, is in when he's on the planet. Yeah. I don't know. Are you serious about that or not? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just making an educated guess. <laughs> but it'd be so much more funny if it was. The only way that could be funnier is if he somehow finds a straw and goes, hmm. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> Tastes like and chicken. Then, then, then later finds out what it was and he's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> No, no, it has to be even funny to be like, tastes like chicken. <laughs> what do you guys think of the first mate's character? I liked him. Yeah, he was I good. I liked him. Definitely good. Um, he's sort of investigating no matter what was really well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. That scene with um, with uh, Lorelai, where, like, where, were the, where the little girl, what's her name? Um... Krista, Crystal. where yeah. she, oh, Krista. yeah, during Krista during that party, um, where she, oh. where she, where she's following oh. Lorelai, and then she turns around, and her mouth like opens really, like starts, <laughs> it's gets so creepy, and then of course the video of Lorelai and the captain shows up. Yeah, that that shot of look away, and she's like, why? And just rah, I was like, yeah, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> When, when the hot chick goes from hot chick to zombie chick to good god, what the hell is going on with that? <laughs> Run away! <laughs> yeah, god. <laughs> well, well, Sounds like a Doctor Who episode, Run Away. <laughs> Run away. It does, doesn't it? We'll, we'll feed David to her because she was a raging young feminist. Yay! <laughs> Wait, what? She heard the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And rest in peace. Come well, on. voice t- voice acting talents there aside, um, <laughs> what do you? I want to hear what do you guys all rate the show out of ten? I rate it a none. I really want a TV series. I'm really hooked into it. I would have I, to agree. I I'm would... abstaining on a vote because I haven't seen it, so I can't make any comments. The correct answer is a nine. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> Rate a show whether whether I have when I have not seen it. So it's definitely one of the better shows sci-fi has done. I mean, don't get me started on Tube of Copper. That was horrible. Basically, anything between Bowser Galactica and now has, for the most part, been crap, except for Warehouse 13 and Eureka. Yeah. Those shows and were good. I loved Eureka. Actually, speaking of Warehouse 13, have you guys been watching the Librarian? Librarians, yeah. Not yet. Yep, I haven't seen this week's episode yet. No, I've heard, it's, I've heard it's, it's very much like Warehouse 13, that, and some people are like acting like it's a ripoff. Actually, the librarians comes before Warehouse 13. Wait, it, as in, not as in, it's as it's in part it, of the same. No, as oh, okay. in the librarians was originally made at the same time that and before Stargate Atlantis was made. So the librarians itself as a concept is an, a, quite an old concept. Um, okay, the show was so made recently, though. Yeah, that, 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 there was three movies made. And oh. Those movies. And we're talking degrade movies, so that's all, why no one's really heard of them. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> they're, they're bad. They're calling them bad does disservice to transmorphers. <laughs> and the, yes, I said transmorphers. 
sci-fi <laughs> movie Transmorphers is catastrophically bad. Wait, wait, you mean the movie... Tra- you actually meant Transmorphers? Yes. I've never heard of this in my life. Yeah, just don't. Just, just, just don't. There, there, there's, <laughs> there's some movies you watch where you want the time back. And... Tra- like Transformers 4 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles done by Michael Bay. I'm not ever going to yeah. touch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, don't! It's not worth it. In all honesty, the Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is better than the, these movies. Yeah. The movies were, the movies themselves are really bad, um, but they were... There's a good theory behind it. Just Yeah. It's an awesome concept. Poorly the, delivered. The, the effective concept is that random guy gets a job at the, a library which is sort of like the warehouse in warehouse 13 and goes around and deals with magic-y things um, and it's very sort of Indiana Jones because I think both pre- both warehouse 13 and um, the librarian can probably be traced back to the Indiana Jones movies because they're very much that same sort of concept the difference is the librarian does it with magic warehouse 13 more did it with science than magic um and the librarian picks up after, directly after those three movies and goes from there. Um, so should you actually watch the movies if you're planning on going to the series? You don't have no. to. No, it's not needed. It's not. But needed. they are. But they are actually. Yes. Greek related. So it's not yeah. like there was a movie, but then they took it and redid it. No, it's, it's, like it's not like you needed. Okay. Not like you needed to have watched the Stargate movie to understand SG One. Yeah, I was just about to say exactly that. Okay, but it ties in kind of like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, sort of. Okay. Not, but not. poorly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the th- there's three sort of hour and a half movies. They're standalone movies, but in a series. And it's done, the, the main guy in it, in those movies, is the same guy from Falling Skies, the main guy from Falling Skies, who... No, a while? Yeah, him. Um, he's the main oh, guy in it. Oh, I like him. Um, and he did this before he did Falling Skies, and now Falling Skies is over, he's moved back to doing this. They have one more season of Falling Skies. Yeah, but it's fin- it's yeah, but it's finished. They finished filming and everything. Uh, oh, okay. As far as, as far as I know, so because right. it's because it's over, he's moved on to doing more of the librarian and stuff. Um, so how's the uh, how's the chemistry of the cast? Um, surprisingly good, except- for a bunch of fuck ups. Yeah, and that's the the Asiany guy. I just want to punch him in the face every time he speaks. Seriously. <laughs> well, he does kind of deserve it too. It's just the accent. Something about the accent just makes me want to punch him in the face. In all honesty, his, the way he acts reminds me of probably one of my most reviled characters from an anime show ever, and I just want to punch him in the face anyway, but yeah. he's also funny. Yeah. Oh, he's got his moments. Like, the, in, like I watched the, the Christmas special, the one with Santa in it, leaving it there. Which was, which was completely a case of... What the fuck were they smoking, casting God, casting him as Father Christmas? Yeah. But overall, I actually expected that to be a sharp junking, uh, uh, because words and podcasts don't work. Um, (laughs) I honestly expected that to be a sharp jumping episode, and I was quite surprised they were doing it so early, but I was admittedly surprised it wasn't as catastrophically bad as I expected. Doesn't mean it was good. It's not as bad. <laughs> I mean, I kept I kept expecting Father Christmas to pull out a freaking sawn-off shotgun and a chainsaw hand. Well, when it was <laughs> Odin, that wouldn't have surprised surprised me at all because Odin was Odin. <laughs> it, yeah. Long story short, the way they sort of did Santa was that um, he was all the different incarnations of Father Christmas rolled into one, and he needed a totem to sort of lock him in whatever version that he was in at that point so because he lost his totem at one point i won't say how i won't give you too many spoilers uh he starts fritzing between his different previous versions and his current self um so at one point he becomes um he gets a cane thing and turns into a cranky bastard if i remember correctly cranky prankster yeah cranky prankster and then he turns back to normal and then later on he turns into odin and when he's at a pub, and that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was downright hilarious. Yeah, that was good. That that sort of redeemed it. His, 
his but, abilities as an actor redeemed the episode. Yeah. But it was really a case of what were they smoking when they cast the guy who did Ash Williams as a freaking Father Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another question. How the hell did they drive from the UK to, to England, um, Canada? That just got written off as written off as Father Christmas magic bullshit. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> they drove. <laughs> they yeah. Won. In a crappy VW Beetle at that. Oh my god. Yeah. John Lennon eat your fucking heart out. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the age old whose line is it anyway joke where they're telling um, signs that you read as you drive into a state. Welcome to Hawaii. How did you drive here? <laughs> 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 Welcome to Georgia, no black people allowed. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> hey, it was just one of the things they said on the show. The hey, 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 wait. The viewers of Stuart have... are not necessarily the viewers of Stuart. The... No, no, that, that was on... The US I will confirm here, that. Right? That was on... <laughs> that was on whose line? Yeah, that was on whose line is it anyway, so that is canon, and they actually did that to the black guy. Yeah. <laughs> poor Wayne. Oh, poor, poor Wayne. <laughs> Have you seen him recently? He's bald now. He was kind of bald on the show. Yeah. And he's... He was losing his hair rapidly on the show. And Drew Carey's thin. <laughs> that is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Is and Colin Mockery's even more bald. Yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> the only yeah, way he yeah. could possibly be more bald is if his head got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll say the hair on his back is gone. Yeah. So, anyway, it's about time for us to jump to the last ad break, so... It, Another minute long break. So, anyway, let's Best get this. If you're a fangirl or fanboy in your life, why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out of this world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit hawaiicon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the earth became poison, before the company strayed dragon smugglers and thieves, ruled by prevail, www.starcrystal. And welcome back to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. We're all still here, except for uh, not Michael's still here, so we're all still here. <laughs> so 4:45 a.m. and counting. <laughs> so now it's time for Stuart to do the news. Ah, uh, so um, <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey Stuart, so... here's a bus. Have fun under it. <laughs> <laughs> now, just, now, I need, now I'm holding up a Wally Coyote so I'm going, help me. <laughs> so, uh, last week, uh, the, um, with some Star Wars news, uh, a cult, um, a picture came out for um, Kylo Ress's ma- uh, mask, who's going to be the bad guy in um, the Star Wars trilogy, which is a very close resemblance to early concept art of Vader's helmet and mask. Yeah. Which has got me thinking, I'm I'm now slowly picking this up, and I should have picked it up earlier. That I think the new, uh, oh, I don't know if it'll be the whole trilogy, but at least Episode Seven is, is going to be a um, going to have a lot of throwbacks. Yeah, that's. There's been rumors that Palpatine's going to be back in it. There's really? been rumors that Vader's might be back in it. Um, so primarily in flashbacks. Um, so it, it's sort of interesting. It's. From what I've heard, is it's meant to be a very sort of Sith worshipy type um, bad guy. So he worships so Jar Jar the Sith. Binks, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we expect. He's Where's the... my lightsaber? I need to kill him now. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was Darth Sidious? That would be the scariest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Even I would go into the fetal position and cry. <laughs> I'd sell tickets to it to us as well. <laughs> There's a potential what if for you, Michael. Write that one down. I, I will. <laughs> but um, because 
apparently, um, the one thing I hope they don't do with um Kylo Ress, um, because he's a human cyborg apparently, is please don't make him do a Vader line and make him one someone's dad in it. <laughs> and please, for the love of God, do not make him speak like fucking Grievous. <laughs> yeah, you give him a heart problem. Uh, Actually, do you know how Grievous got his heart problem? Or his breathing problems? Yeah. He was probably a heavy smoker in his early days. <laughs> <laughs> no, a certain uh, smart ass who wanted to be a Jedi Knight or Jedi Master beyond all else kind of cut half of them off. Uh, no, actually, you're. What? From what I saw, because I was young. There's that, but when I first saw it, it was actually during the really, really bad Clone Wars cartoon series that Cartoon Network did. <laughs> yeah, they actually I, had a I really pretend bad? that doesn't exist. You say really bad? That's one of the that's like no, no, a you're... very popular show. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're thinking, you're thinking the, the you're thinking the, the new CGI. one. I'm talking the one that was back in the early 2000s. See, there was I there was there the was the one. Clone Wars and there was Clone Wars. Clone Wars was the follow-on from the 3D movie. The Clone Wars was a anime styled Star Wars cartoon, yeah. which was yeah, just leaving that the fuck alone. That they actually made Anakin more high pitched. <laughs> yeah. But um um so what they had at the end was um, Mace Windu actually crushed um his organs, well, like force crushed his organs. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. Damn person. it, mates! Couldn't you have done a better job and just finished him off? You think there's not much in the way of coming back from crushed organs, though? Yeah, but we um, are talking yeah. Star Wars, though. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I, I found a intriguing plot. Ho um, read about an intriguing plot hole, which I never really considered. If you think about it, in Episode Four of Star Wars, the A New Hope, um, which I know people are going to kill me for calling Episode Four. I don't care, it's numbered as number four. Get I call it. it episode four, it's fine. I yeah. call it four. A lot of people call it one because the first three didn't happen. To those people, <laughs> suck up, suck it up, grow, get over it. Anyway. Um, Grow up here. More, more people hating me, woo! Enemy list increasing, woo! Um, anyway. Thought you'd be used to that by now. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of taken number at this point. Anyway, um, in that episode, when Luke is first given his lightsaber... What does Obi Wan Kenobi say to him? Uh, the, what, the the part that his father wanted him to have it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, he actually takes it and chops Anakin's arms and legs off. Yeah. So <laughs> well, so, so so think about it. He he was never going to win Father chopped, of the Year award. Chopped Anakin's arms and legs off, left him on a volcano planet, mostly on fire, partially charcoal. Picks up his lightsaber, walks away. It's multiple years later. Oh, he said child, his son turns up at his house randomly middle of nowhere and goes oh yes your father wanted you to have this because when I last saw him he never expressed that he was on fire and screaming in agony and screaming I hate you because of pain and so I just assumed that he wanted you to have it because he doesn't know you exist <laughs> didn't, they do, didn't they do that on Robot Chicken? quite possibly it's, it it's sad when Robot Chicken makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So, anyway, Stuart, what's the, the last couple of pieces of news are both Trek related. Yes, we have a director. Since it won't be Jar Jar Abrams. Yes, I'm using that name again. Uh. It is going to be Justin Lin, who has been the previous director for the Fast and Furious movies. So what you're um, saying is, we're gonna get a Klingon quality. ship. We're gonna get a Klingon <laughs> ship parked next to the Enterprise. They're both gonna rev their V8s and they're gonna try and see who can drift around the moon the fastest. <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna say they were gonna have a hyper, um, a light, a hyperspace drag race, but yeah, yeah warp, warp speed drag race. <laughs> <laughs> Sulu warp speed engage. Actually, that's and don't forget the wrong captain. Damn it! Stupid don't Picard. forget. <laughs> And do not forget to take the handbrake off this time. <laughs> you mean the external hull dampener things? To be fair, yes. 
he has revived the Fast and Furious franchise really well. Yeah, yeah. In in all fairness, jokes aside, I actually think he's going to do a good job. Yeah, hey, um... not too many lens flares, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you heard Abrams we, we apologize. We have that Star Wars. You guys, we took that from you. They can we have no lens flares anymore. Yeah, have, have fun with your have fun with your lens flares, Star Wars fanboys. You never know. Maybe there'll be a lens flare lightsaber flight. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> you know, like, apparently right. his wife told him he she, they went to an early screening of uh, Into Darkness, and his wife told him there's too many flares. Hilarious. She actually made him get rid of a bunch of them. <laughs> That's pretty <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> so yeah, he um he's gonna be the um director. Yeah. And we also have a release date. Woo! Now, Woo! I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know when this will be for Australia. But for Amer at least I'm guessing this is for America. I'll Star tell you Trek guys about Star it when it comes out. Star Trek Three will hit theaters July eighth, twenty sixteen. Which means I'm gonna like be a six most movies. Now, Star Trek 13. Star Trek 13. And, and like most movies like this, it's probably going to come out in Australia three days early. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what, the with the exception of The Hobbit, every movie recently has come out with this in Australia first. <laughs> Not quite, actually. Um, this is from a mutual friend of ours. Of me, Dave, and Stewart's. Greg was over in the US on a job and he w he missed the chance to see penguins by one day. Wow. Gets back here going, oh yeah, penguins should be out when I get home. Gets nope. back Boxing Day release. <laughs> he missed it by not delaying for one day, he missed it by two, the chance to see it for two months. <laughs> That's pretty now, funny. Uh, uh, with the um, with the trailer, uh, oh sorry, with the movie release date, not sure if anyone actually realizes, but that's actually the 50th anniversary of the television yep. launch for Star Trek. Yeah. I, mean, I figured they were gonna do that because you know, I mean, they couldn't miss the 50th anniversary, especially after Doctor Who had such a huge deal about it. Yeah. We're gonna have to do a Star Trek special at some point for that. Definitely. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Now the news is done, let's move on to more fun things. Let's recap this week's uh, sci-fi movies tournament. Starting with, who do we think should win? X-Men or Event Horizon? Event Horizon. Yeah, Event Horizon. I right. mean, it depends on which... It depends on... You're saying X-Men as a whole? X, the entire X-Men franchise. Uh, I mean... I loved Event Horizon, but I'd probably have to go with X Men just because of how much more of it, it was and the really good entries of X Men, not the bad ones. Yeah. Well, put it they had way, some good stuff, they had some bad stuff. Last week we talked yeah, about did. this, and I called it for X Men. And I called it for X Men because there's way too many X Men fanboys out there, and not enough people like Event Horizon. It doesn't seem to get. It's a very relatively fringe sci-fi movie, so to speak, uh -huh. compared to X-Men. And X-Men 1. So next, right. we've got two movies that I haven't seen. Metropolis versus Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. <laughs> Invasion of the Can't Body Snatchers. I, that's, yeah, that's a cult classic, dude. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I've never seen either of them, but I would probably go with Metropolis just because of, you know, it's, it's one of those classic sci-fis. I'm I'm calling that Michael is cheating because he's right for a second time in a row. Metropolis <laughs> won that one. Wow. I'm not looking at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, wait, wait, don't worry. What's that clicking I hear in the background? Don't <laughs> worry, Michael. We believe you. Worst okay. Shatner ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up, we have Close Encounters of the Third Kind versus Escape from New York. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. <laughs> it's a it, once again cult classic. If that loses, if that lost, I will have to ban everybody who voted against it from the page. <laughs> wow, mod abuse one on one. Okay, put it this I'm way. I'm torn. I love them both. 
Okay, there is five votes from es for Escape from New York. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen votes for Close Encounters. Okay, good. So Close Encounters won that one. Next up, now, seriously, this one pissed me off. This one really pissed me off. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, I saw this. I think oh, I saw boy. E.T. versus the Stargate SG-1 movies. <laughs> I know what Why? One. Just why? Why Dude, the uh, hell did SG1... so many people vote for SG-1 movies? <laughs> yes, the TV show was good. The movies are nowhere near as good sci-fi compared to, say, E.T. Oh, well, David, I have an answer uh, for you about that. I have an answer for you on that. Too many, the uh, reason too why many feckin' Stargate is, fans on our page? Yes. I mean, you know, a, a lot of our page, our page was basically built off of Stargate fans. Yeah, I know, which, majority. Is, which is what surprised me when Babylon 5 won the TV show of the year. I was like, sorry, the t the ultimate sci-fi show. Just out That's of nowhere. That's because Babylon 5 is just amazing. Well, I've ne never really seen Babylon 5, and I know well, there was I, a lot of I fans for it. Um, I've actually got it on DVD. It's on the shelf. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I just haven't... You better stop and watch it afterwards. <laughs> I haven't got around to watching it yet. I'm about halfway through season one. Um, well, anyway, watch, man. Anyway. It gets um, much better than season one. I knew there was some fans for that, but considering how many votes it got originally when we in the first round that it was in, and compared to the number of votes that Farscape got, because that was the first big pair-up, was Farscape versus Babylon 5. And they just got... Babylon 5, from that week on, just went absolutely nuts. Just annihilated everything it was up against. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think this is the... Yeah, this is the second last one. Um, the Predator movies versus the original Planet of the Apes. Predator, probably. Yeah, I'm going to say Predator, also... probably. Yeah. Just something about not Arnie. Predator, but, I, but I bet it won. Yeah, Pre <laughs> Predator won. He doesn't love Arnie. Yeah, this one was in the bag. This, there was no way that this was not going to win. Um, <laughs> this one. It's just this one is just easy, yeah. easy win. Blade Runner versus Robocop. <laughs> Blade Runner. Yeah. Blade. <laughs> How, what idiot votes for Robocop? Over, uh, actually I did. Robocop. <laughs> one. <laughs> Let's see. There was one, two, three. Four. Uh, four votes for Robocop that I can see. Fuckers! So, uh, I would have voted for Robo. Yeah. And today's one we have Avengers versus the Doctor Who movie, and this hasn't been decided Avengers yet. Is gonna win. Avengers is going to win. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's the lesser of two evils. I have to go Avengers, even though. It's yeah. I, I don't know. I which Doctor Who movie are we talking? The, the movie. The one from the eighties. Yeah. No, sorry, the that Paul one. The one the with Paul, Paul McGann. McGann. Yeah. I liked I liked Paul McGann. He was Yeah, good. Paul McGann was he didn't great. Have enough. Yeah. But he never did ever it well, British... but he had a crap script he had his crappy yeah. script yeah. to work never with. Never ever give British stuff to Americans. They always fuck it up. Yeah. And I <laughs> see I want I wanted this round to be the death of the T V movies. Uh, just because there's a lot of really good movies on there that deserve a chance and the T V movies for the most part they just don't match, if you know what I mean. They're just not the same. Anyway, we're in the last. <laughs> we're in the last minute and a half. Well, minute ish. So now is everybody's chance to say their goodbyes and say once and for all, what was better, the Doctor Who Christmas special or Ascension? Oh, that's easy. Doctor Who. Ascension. Ascension. By far Ascension. By far Ascension? Hey, my vote doesn't count, remember? I haven't seen Ascension. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that? so we have one vote for Doctor Who. Which doesn't count. Yes, it does. <laughs> one vote for Ascension from Michael. Two. One vote from Ascension from Stuart. Meaning that I could potentially tie this up and be an evil bastard. Or Jesus agree God. and put Ascension on the pillar of where it deserves to be and I'm, I'm going with ascension so yeah 
Anyway. I'm not going to argue with it. <laughs> 20, 20 seconds left. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys next week. Have it. Bye. Stay safe. Have fun. Live long and prosper. Bye. Toodles. May the force be with you. So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs>